Hi, my name is David Chen. I am the Director of Applications Engineering at Power Integrations. I am here today to talk to you about energy labels. And these are the types of labels that you may find on products such as refrigerators, televisions, LED light bulbs, uh, what you would see on the box. And the energy label is one type of policy instrument that is used by governments, for example, to promote and encourage higher energy efficiency products. These labels, they can come in different varieties. Some are voluntary type labels, others are mandatory. For a voluntary label, uh, you may consider something like the Energy Star label. This is administered by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, uh, in the US. And although manufacturers are not required to certify to Energy Star to sell their products in the US, unless it's for you know, a government institution, perhaps, uh, it is still very much sought after because it is a way that manufacturers use to differentiate their brands as high performance. Uh, similarly, there are also mandatory labels, and these are labels you would see in Europe or in China or, in fact, in a lot of different countries throughout the world. Uh, these are required to be placed on products so that consumers know exactly what they're getting, and these are part of the local laws. Whether it is a voluntary or mandatory type label, one thing is for sure, they're all basically there to help inform consumers and encourage them in their decision making, ideally toward more energy efficient products. One framework that I wanted to talk about today is the way policy is implemented in Europe. You can see here on this graphic that energy efficiency is marked on the vertical axis with higher energy efficiency toward the top and lower energy efficiency toward the bottom. In a landscape of different products, you will have, uh, for example, some products with uh, really high energy efficiency, maybe some down here that are not so great. Uh, and what I've noted here for an average product is this dashed line. Okay, so one policy instrument used by governments to improve and move up this average product efficiency is using regulations. In Europe, they have what is known as the Eco Design Directive. And what that does is it sets the minimum efficiency requirement shown by this solid line right here at the bottom. What that means is that any product that doesn't meet at least the numbers that are required for efficiency as stated in the regulations will not be allowed to be sold in the marketplace, in this case in Europe, right? So you can see that instantly there are products here that would no longer be part of the marketplace. And the idea here is once you've removed all of these poor performing products, you can essentially move up the average product from here, where it used to be, pushed up to this new higher level. The next policy instrument beyond the Eco Design Directive used in Europe is the energy label. So you can see that the Eco Design Regulation is still in effect, so it still sets the minimum performance level. But on top of it, we now have a label and consumers can see for any given product how well that product is performing. An A grade, of course, is the best and who wouldn't want an A? Uh, then, of course, you have B, C, and D in this case as well uh, for the respective levels of performance. The idea here is in addition to pushing up on the bottom and taking out the worst performers in the marketplace, you can reset the new average to an even higher level, right, based on market motivators such as the desire to have the best grade products. So energy labeling is a very powerful way to encourage the adoption of more energy efficient products. In addition to the push that is created from the minimum efficiency requirement by the Eco Design Regulation, we also have the pull of labeling which encourages consumers to buy the best products out there.
Now I'd like to talk about label reform. In March of 2021, there's going to be a significant transition in the way grades are handled on labels. So in 2020, you can see that across a distribution of all the products, in this case, electronic displays, 94% of those products have an A grade or better, right? And the very top performing products, 4% have an A++ plus rating, right? So A or better means A, A+, plus, A++, plus plus, or A++++. Plus plus plus. As a consumer, when looking at this landscape of labels, it becomes quite clear that there's really not much motivation to keep buying an even better product. For most of us, we get an A, we're quite happy. So the European Commission recognizing that is instituting some reform. So of the 15 product categories covered with the energy label in Europe, five of those categories will be undergoing reform. Those categories include refrigerators, washing machines, dishwashers, electronic displays, which include both televisions as well as monitors, and finally, lighting. So what should we be expecting? In 2021, in March, the labels will shift to an entirely different landscape. Most products, in fact, 98% of them will have a D label or worse. Only 2%, the top 2%, will have a grade of C or better. So you can see this whole thing is almost as if it's flipped upside down, where what was previously a monitor with an A++++ grade will now be a C grade. And again, the idea here is to motivate consumers so that they feel that there is more improvement to be had where the labels and grades themselves are more meaningful and thereby achieve a path toward higher energy efficiency overall. Regarding the visual format for labels, I wanted to cover a couple of examples. Here, I'd like to show the energy label for China in comparison to the energy label that is used in Europe. When looking at the China label, of course, you'll have it marked with the China Energy Agency logo. And on top of it, when you look at the various hierarchy of products, it will be denoted through a pyramid and labeled one, two, three, respectively, based on the level of performance. And of course, there will be some sort of indication as to what level this particular product meets. Very similarly, in Europe, where there is a flag for the European Union, there, instead of a pyramid, is a set of grades. that range from A, B, C, D, with A being the highest performing product. Okay. Beyond what is listed there, the European label also shows the usage in energy over, for example, a full cycle if it's a dishwasher, right? or it could also reflect the total energy usage in a year. So it could be per annum. And that's generally listed in the middle section of the label. Both labels have a QR code, and I'll just mark it this way, uh, on the label as well. And the reason for having a QR code is that there needs to be some sort of database that keeps track of all the various products that have been registered to meet the labeling requirement. So when the QR code is scanned for a product, it will have a link to a registry 
uh, in Europe or in China, respectively, that has additional product information and some sort of declaration that the performance requirements for the label are indeed met. Finally, in terms of the European label, there is a bottom section which will have additional icons. So I've talked about energy efficiency as the predominant uh, performance metric as far as the label goes. Uh, but in addition to energy efficiency, it's also very important to note that the European label also covers different aspects related to the ecosystem. For example, uh, it can note what the level of audible noise is in terms of that performance because, for example, when it comes to motors, the level of noise makes a big difference to consumers. So on a washing machine, for example, there will be some indication about uh, the performance in terms of the noise level. Uh, furthermore, for things that use, or appliances that use water, you may have uh, this little faucet symbol, and there'll be some indication of the number of liters of water usage in a particular cycle for that appliance, um, a washing machine, for example. So you can see that there are all sorts of beneficial indicators to consumers to help encourage them to purchase products that are not only energy efficient, but better for the environment in general. At Power Integrations, we care a lot about energy efficiency. For more information related to regulations, please visit power.com.